it's Johnny Rocket here at the Johnny Rocket Launchpad. Always launching ideas in your direction. America's only rock and roll libertarian radio show. And it's me, Johnny Rocket, here at the Launchpad and Base One. And Base One is actually my home flipping studio. So uh, anyways, I'm here and I'm actually under the weather. But this is a kind of a special edition added onto the back end of the Liberty Force radio drama. So... Um, this is kind of out of sequence, but next week we're going to have uh, Anthony Welty on as our guest. But this this week we have a very special guest all the way from Richmond, Virginia. Give it up for Cal Molinay. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to your show. Uh, hey, Cal. How you doing, brother? Great. Good. I heard you're, uh, you said you're related to uh, uh, Brian Setzer. Is that right? I am. Yeah. I am his. Uh, I'm his. Uh, I'm his nephew. Your Brian nephew. and I go back. We we drank some beers before. Actually, I've never met the guy, but uh, our band has actually played with Lee Rocker, and yeah. uh, and uh, Slim Jim Phantom. So Slim Jim, the drummer from the Stray Cats, actually played on our drum set of our band at a show because he didn't have a kit. So he's like, "Can I borrow your kit?" And we're like, "Oh yeah." You could fucking have it, uh, <laughs> but no, he signed the the drum head and shit. It was cool. It was cool. I never met Brian though. Never met Brian, but I would like to. Brian's a pretty cool guy. He's a very talented musician. But I am under the weather. Just to let everyone know, I've been sick. I've been off of work for the last two days. But I'm like, you know what? I got to do the show and I got to get it out. And so I'm gonna do like a 30 minute special here, and uh, I'll let you guys kind of know how I met or how I found Cal Moline. Uh, I found him on YouTube. One day I was on YouTube watching Mises videos and I just started watching all these videos. And then all of a sudden this guy named Cal Molyneux came out, Molyneux came out and he kept talking and talking about, you know, questioning people on the street. You know, what do you think of this? And what do you think of that? And do you think you're a libertarian? And why are you a libertarian? And why aren't you a libertarian? <laughs> he started interrogating people on the street, and making them look like assholes. And it was awesome. I thought this guy's awesome. He's coming. He's from Richmond, Virginia. He is the founder of Liberate, Liberate RVA and an advocate of peaceful parenting and proponent of free markets everywhere. And this is what we talk about here on the Launchpad. So, Cal, thank you so much for being here, brother. No, yeah, it's uh, great being on the show. Um, and you're all the way from Seattle. That's, uh, again, that's got to be kind of a war zone out there. It, it, it is a war zone. I'm fighting the war alone, Cal. I'm fighting it alone. <laughs> Out there Just me and you. like a couple of libertarians. We got like three of us versus like a thousand of them. <laughs> like I so said, like, well, you go ahead. I was going to say, uh, yeah, keep in touch. Uh, my friend Phil Pollard's out there in Seattle. There's a couple other anarchists out there. Um, but yeah, no, I always hear like the situation on the Western coast is like, you know, create the partition outside of California, but or California, right? Yeah, that's it. California. Um, and they're thinking about separating in three different uh, regions now, which is, uh, I guess, Good, maybe. Um. <laughs> sure. Just succession. Just keep seceding. That's only, it. Just keep keep doing it. The only interesting thing out of Seattle I've ever heard of, of is um, Phoenix Jones. Have you ever heard of that guy? Uh, I know I love Jones. Phoenix Jones. He's a, he's a guy who dresses up as a superhero and goes out and fighting crime in the streets. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Phoenix Jones. I, I forgot his name, man. Yeah, he dresses up. I don't know if he's still around, but we actually talked about him on the show like way back in episode like 10. Yeah, nice. So it's, yeah, so this is episode 131, and uh, it's been a while. But yeah, you're right, Phoenix Jones. He's that black dude, and he has a whole team now. It's like a Justice League of people who fight crim crime here, and I don't know if he's still around or not, but but yeah, he, he gets around. He got around anyways. Yeah, I know. So Cal, yeah. Cal, so you know what what I found really interesting about your videos is you go you go out there and you start talking to people. You start going like what the what the hell is going on? You start asking people all these hard questions. Oh, what made you start doing that? You started kind of making these videos on YouTube and they're really good. They're really interesting cuz you actually have these conversations with mostly communists, which I find is <laughs> awesome. You call them out. You call the commies out. Yeah. Um, so what made you want to start doing this? Uh, <clears throat> I would say um, moving to Richmond, um, made some friends and 
uh, realizing that uh, people can be good and I guess coming to that epiphany, I guess, in that sort of way. Um, maybe there's a way to create anarchy, I guess. You know, it's not like a, a destination, right, or a place sort of thing. Sure. All right. So you could say it's a way of life, it's a community, it's the people there. And uh, so when I started to make friends, uh, it was very much a misanthropic curmudgeon, uh, for the most part. Um, so I was just realizing that, you know, if, uh, if people can be good, if I, if there are good people out there, uh, why not give it a shot? And, uh, so I started trying to talk about anarchy <laughs> to, uh, my good friends then, uh, Sarah and, uh, Rachel. And it took me, uh, like, I don't know, eight months. It took me a while. I'm just going at it and going through like all of the questions, all of the, um, you know, this the same way that sometimes people have difficulty in just talking to their best friend or their parents uh, or anybody. You know, I went through the same process. And uh, sure, sure. After like 10 months, I feel like finally getting through and making progress and having good exchange and um, them understanding and asking very good, rigorous questions that made me like have to examine like my approach. Um, <clears throat> when they finally like understood anarchy, um, I took all that experience and all the questions and the uh, <laughs> and the arguments together and uh, realized maybe I could compile it into a format that will be uh, easily presented uh, to talk to other people about it instead, too. So then um, I would say that experience is what uh, pushed me to realize maybe I could talk to other people about anarchy, too, because most of the time when people get into these kind of arguments, they go like from all over the place. Right. It's very difficult to have a structured uh, conversation when like it becomes a tangent argument and you're just pretty much like, a, you know, trying to reel a fish, you know, all over the place and just, uh, you know, from rose to nuclear weapons to the poor and. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it <laughs> and it can be very difficult. Uh, for a lot of people and so i created like a formula of like creating an introduction to um you yourself would acknowledge or talk to me what your moral principles are and then i would just show you how the state contradicts that uh, how the state sure. is everything but that and then from there once we have a good understanding of what is moral morality what is more what is good and what is the state i found it then easier then to finally have the questions about what about the roads? What about, you know, um, military security uh, and everything else falls into line. Very easy to talk about anarchy for once. Yeah, but I think, you know, a lot of people get the term anarchy. So, you know, we, we say, you know, libertarians use the term voluntarist um, as a, a nice way of saying we're an anarchist, you know, really. And it, I, I believe it's the same thing, very similar to each other. Uh, but we we tend to use words like radical capitalist um, without saying that word just because it has a negative connotation associated with it, especially with the left. The left has used that term forever. And so uh, what are you, what is your opinion on that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> the left has used that term forever. Um and it hasn't really gotten them anywhere, right? Over the past hundred years since it has uh, right true. like that um first international conference in France. You had all these anarcho communists, syndicalists coming together. Uh, and nothing really came out of any of that, right? Um, and even today, fast forward hundred years, nothing has ever really been pushed much forward, except for like kicking down some trash cans or something. So I would say like this is like uh, pretty much a marketing uh, game, you can say in that respect. Uh, talking about uh, anarchy, uh, can be difficult, yeah, but it depends like on who you're talking to. It's pretty much like I would say selling a product of any kind. You know, if I talk to a Republican, I love capitalism, so I have no problem just saying capitalism, right? <laughs> There's a lot of people. Yeah, they like they like that word, right? Yeah, it, it, it's it's uh, whereas like the left would cringe at you saying capitalism because they think uh, greedy capitalists, you know. Uh, controlling everyone, you know, uh, sending everyone to the treasuries for um, not paying them higher wages or things like that. Uh, no health insurance. Um, and so it, it just kind of depends on, you know, who your audience is. And I do enjoy talking about anarchy with the right uh, Republicans. They, you know, it's pretty much at that point, uh, you know, 
you get to, to agree with capitalism is awesome. You know, why can't capitalism be awesome in all these other particular smaller areas that they sure. No, no, no. I'm yeah. totally with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so at that point, you know, it doesn't really. Um, I don't think it's much of a difficulty today to talk about anarchy with the right. Uh, Anarcho-capitalism, you know even the term has been like sure. separated a lot lately, thanks to uh, the media, Facebook. You know, pe pe there's the, the word anarcho-capitalism is almost becoming like a, 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 a term that a lot of people kind of know about, uh, I would say, um, thanks to like 4chan or um, Facebook, um, especially uh, in this past election. Um, what I noticed, though, is that it's easier to talk to somebody on the right about libertarianism or anarcho-capitalism or voluntarism than it is from somebody on the left. Um, I think the people on the right, deep down, even though they keep voting Republican, um, really do care about freedom and liberty. I think they really do, but I, they're also brainwashed as, just as much as the Democrats are. But I think they're nicer for some reason. I, I, I don't know what your experiences are, but to me, they seem a lot more open-minded to the idea than the left. Yeah, uh, with the left, uh, it's mostly about uh, emotional appeals, I would say. Um, the left is uh, devoid of history, and not so much the right is, as well, but a lot of the concerns about the left is uh, mostly towards like um, pathos appeal. It's uh, what about the people? What about the poor? What about health insurance? But what they don't understand is that all these things in the past were once provided by the market. But like in the eerie 1984, uh, you know, erasing of history, uh, they're gone from the history books and how the market took care of the poor and how before Lyndon Johnson's great war on poverty, there were many great friendly societies and organizations and groups that went out there to help those in need. And so it wasn't really a problem, you know, a poverty rates nearly declined to, to like to nail nothing. Right. And so with them, it's just like, um, propagandize, uh, run to the middle of public schools, uh, misinformed. Um, they have a great heart of wanting to help other people. Uh, unfortunately, it's just, uh, they just been misinformed about a lot of, so I would say like, there's a different tactical approach to talking to the left. And you want to bring up capitalism. <laughs> you bring that up later, right? You say free market. Uh, you know, anarchy. That's true. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. You say anarchy, right. anarchy 101 uh, and, and, and like anarchy for 100 level, you know, then you bring up capitalism and then talk about that, right? I've kind of figured it in the same way that um, when I talk about anarchy, I don't uh, bring up peaceful parenting in the beginning. That's like anarchy for 100 level. Uh, let's talk about, you know, respecting, you know, uh, body ownership, property rights, things like that. And uh, and then eventually we can talk about like, yeah, eventually that extends to, you know, smaller people, right? Kids. Um, whereas I figure I found like if you start off with peaceful parenting in the beginning, that could be kind of visceral. That can be kind of personal. People will take it um, uh, as uh, being accused of, uh, you know, bad parent and whatnot. Um, and this is not supposed to be about shaming people into accepting it right that's what right. Cults, what cults cults do that right so right right um so yeah there's i would say there's a particular way to go about it there's a good strategy that i found myself personally after doing this for a good number of years uh that i find to be effective efficient at uh, going about and um bring about anarchy and creating a good community of good people of uh of anarchists that uh will one day create the, the free societies that we want. Um, right on, man. Yeah, and it's not going to be like, you know, election was just the other day. <clears throat> so you have, I don't know, time and time again, um, people thinking, you know, all right, you know, it's my fourth year uh, coming up. You know, maybe if I pull that lever harder, we'll get, you know, some more freedom. You know, it, that's their tactic. That's their strategy, right? And, uh, you know, you break it down of like, you know, you're just going to vote harder. It's like, well, you know, that's, and that's it for most people that they think that that's all the, amount of change that they have to put forth or thinking that's going to create anything. Um, even with uh, Trump in the White House, a lot of people think, well, you know, it's better than the, than the left. Well, you know, not a lot of people don't really don't know that for sure. You know, you had, um, uh, who do you have? Murray Rothbard, uh, who voted for Lyndon Johnson, right? Because he thought the other right. guy was going to create a nuclear war and the whole world was going to be a wasteland. Uh, what he didn't know was that Lyndon Johnson would create all the policies and the legislation that would like destroy uh, African American society. communities. Uh, That's yeah, right. Yeah, destroy African American communities. 
devastating. I agree. Right? Uh, I don't know if you could say, what's this worth? Nuclear waste or, you know, the destruction of um, the lifestyle. Of a culture. Of a culture, yeah, whole peoples. Uh, but he didn't Absolutely. know that, right? And that's the thing when you nope. do with politics. It's um, it's uh, one of those uh, gun roulette things, right? Um, so at the same time, so the best, safest bet and going for the long term um, is to abandon politics, uh, focus on yourself, focus on your wealth, <laughs> ignore the state, uh, and your seeking is abolition, but focus on community, focus on friends, um, focus on uh, where you are. Right on. For me, hey. that's here in Richmond. Hey, Cal, what we do here, uh, we're going to have a short show today, but what we normally do on the second segment, it's called Rocket Fire. What we do on Rocket Fire, sir, is I'm going to ask you a series of 10 questions. And if you can answer these questions between 30 to 60 seconds, that'd be badass. <laughs> Cal, can you do this in 30 to 60 seconds? These are tough questions, but sure, yeah. you ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Rocket Fire, question one. How would an anarchist society handle an epidemic? Well, there wouldn't be just one uh, solution which the government provides, right? So you say like... Um... The government provides one solution. The, the market provides uh, billions of solutions because there's billions of people out there, right? So it wouldn't be just one single way to find a way to quarantine a problem. There'll be a multitude of ways to try to solve it itself. It wouldn't be like, I know how to best solve that problem. It would be many other people preventing the same kind of um, different ways to, to solve it. That would be distinct to those regions. Bam! Question two. Is voting aggression even if it leads to more liberty? Yeah, you could say voting is aggression. Voting is the advocation of uh, forcing your opinions onto uh, people in a geographic region. And that doesn't just include uh, people who are trying to vote against you. That also includes uh, children, right? That includes uh, uh, people who can't even vote. Uh, this includes people who abstain from participating in that aggression. Uh, you know, people talk about uh, segregation. Um, I mean, uh, suffrage, you know, it wasn't a long time ago. It wasn't like all men could vote. It was just people who owned property could vote. And so their opinions were forced into even men who didn't have land and women and, and everyone else, right? So, uh, yeah, I would say that voting is the advocation of aggression towards uh, a geographic region of people. Right on, man. Question three. You're doing really good here. Question three. What is the difference between a government and a state? Uh, a, a state is uh, the advocation. The state is a group of individual people that advocate for the initiation of force. Uh, government is just a flavor of how that initiation of force is carried out. So the flavor of uh, different kinds of socialism from fascism to communism. Okay, right on. Question four. Are hierarchies and, cl and a class system a, a naturally occurring thing? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, hierarchies, this means, uh, there, you know, there's someone who has uh, spent a lot, great deal of time uh, through their merits uh, and service. Uh, you can see whether they're a good authority on the subject. And that's kind of what you want in terms of like uh, authority of, uh, of history, authority on, um, you know, uh, someone in a hospital who's, uh, you know, conducting a uh, surgery and telling people what they need to do. Uh, he's got that hierarchy and that, that leadership that he's kind of acquired. Um, a lot of people think that anarchy is against hierarchy because like entomology or whatnot. But, you know, that's, you know, it's uh, those kinds of people that seek to abolish it would have to create a, a hierarchy themselves to abolish hierarchies. Uh, so, yeah, hierarchies are good. It just uh, establishes good leadership. All right, man. Question five. What is agorism and is it the same as anarchism? Agorism is the, let's say, the term of like the art of not getting caught, but it's the interactions that you have with other people and trying to limit the hand of the state and those relationships. The state will try to regulate and tax uh, in all forms of ways, trying to involve yourself in your relationship to another person and that voluntary trade or interaction. And the state will try to tax and regulate as much as they can to siphon that productivity or money or currency to themselves. So agorism would be trying to minimize that as much as you can yard sales for example yeah i like those those are cool you get great deals on records yeah. <laughs> especially stray cats records from 1982 uh, or like 25 cents yeah. that's right they're uh. priceless question six how is anarchism how has the anarchism philosophy changed over the years uh well I, I, the only anarchism philosophy that i've known about um was uh in the beginning when i started doing all this when I got involved was this uh, anarcho-communism. Uh, they hated the state, great, me too. They hated, uh, you know, the police state, great, me too. They hated capitalism, like, eh, I don't know about that. Um, I was into objectivism back then and uh, kind of like capitalism and free markets. Uh, so, you know, separated ways with those kinds of people and uh, 
founded Liberty RBA to be a free market anarchist group. And then it turns out there's been a whole, you know, length of literature that I had no idea that were advocated by other people like Murray Rothbard uh, and Ludwig von Mises for quite a long time. Uh, so has it evolved? Yeah, it's, it's grown. I see a lot of uh, growth, especially at the Mises Institute, which is now an established campus instead of used to being like a small uh, room <laughs> uh, office space, for example, at a university. So, yeah, I, right. think, um, I think the mission is great. I think uh, Ludwig Mises' uh, words uh, still are very much important um, not to uh, give in to, to evil, but proceed ever more boldly against it. Question seven, why aren't there more minorities in the ANCAP movement? Uh, yeah, it sounds like an affirmative action question, right? Uh, it is. It is. It's a tough one. It's, uh, a, it's a gotcha question. Yeah, yeah. Well, I myself uh, am Bolivian, so I'm Latino. Uh, my grandfather escaped from Cuba in a dust cropper plane. Uh, he had a toy compass and a knife to fight off sharks in case it landed in the, <laughs> in the sea there. Where tens of thousands of people have uh, died trying to escape. You know, you never hear any stories about people saying, you know, I risked my life trying to escape capitalism. Uh, and so, uh, his son met my mother who was Bolivian and, uh, you know, there, there are more nerdies, there's, but, but I think, uh, <laughs> I don't know. That seems like, uh, one of I those... know like two, Yeah, I know like, I, I know like Alex Merced, uh, you now and, uh, Eric July. I mean, I mean, there's like a very rare, you know, if most of us are white guys who well, you know, read you... Marvel comic books. <laughs> Well, you're here in uh, in the United States, so like you know, you look at the demographics, um, and uh, that will kind of match. But you look at the demographics of libertarians themselves; it kind of matches the demographics of minorities um, in the United States too. So it kind of sinks in with uh, the number of white people and the libertarian who are libertarians and minorities out there who are libertarians as well. So I think it's a good proportional uh, relationship. Okay, question eight. How can anarcho-capitalist society exist if not everyone adheres to the non-aggression principle? Uh, yeah, there's some people who don't who, who want to murder and maim and kill. That's you know that's that, you know that's that's fine. You know, go on live in the woods and try to create a heater. You know, out of scratch. Uh, sure. Right. You know, it's uh, ethics uh, is not for everyone. Uh, you know, the the relationship that we have with with one another uh, is kind of what we're trying to establish. It's like one of those. Um, HOAs, uh, Housing Authority Communities. Um, and I think the only way we kind of come about through doing that is uh, talking to one another, creating a, like a group that I'm creating here right now. Um, what do you do with people, outsiders? You know, it's like, well, you know, it's uh, like anything else if they trespass into those communities, right? You apprehend Physically them remove them? Physi right, physically remove them. <laughs> <laughs> Hans Herman Hoppe. Right. Uh, I agree, man. I, I, I'm with you. I mean, that's really get to that point where if you have a society that's established and you have infiltrators. Uh, I mean, you look, you at should... the, look at the Amish community, right? If somebody wants to go in there and start to create like, you know, a, a techno community with all their cameras and video. They're going to fucking and, kick your ass out. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this, here are the rules of this community, right? If you want to be a part of this community, you have to agree to the rules. If you don't agree to the rules, then go create your own, right? You know, there's no I stopping agree. you from doing that. All right, man. Uh, question nine. What has been the hardest message for you to get across to people? Lately? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's uh, circumcision is uh, general mutilation. Um, a lot of my posts on like my Facebook wall, for example, I never really get anyone to kind of contest any of those things um, for, for, for a long time, uh, except for one I posted about, you know, uh, circumcision uh, being general mutilation. And uh, this one person just like took that personally and went a crazy tirade about it. And um, so I guess that would be the recent one. It's, um, you know, the cutting up or you can say the sexual assault of um, mutilating a small child, a girl, you know, it's the same thing if you do it to a boy, you know, the same kind of procedure. Um, and so I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think the United States is like one of the only Western countries and the majority that continues to do it today. And the numbers go up to like, 50 to 75 percent, 76 percent of small boys that are assaulted um, here still in the United States. So I think that's a, a big issue to still combat. Um, it still shows that, you know, for the child, for the boy growing up, that, you know, your body doesn't belong to you. All right. Um, and then there's a lot of trauma that goes with that. You know, what what is as uh, my baby boy continue to cry late at night? Well, you know, maybe you cut his dick. And when they pee, it, you know, it, it will kind of cut his dick. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah kind of aggravate that. 
Uh, maybe that's why your baby is crying continuously. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I think that's, that's a very important issue uh, that still I find people having trouble to accept. Interesting. Question 10, what is your opinion of Henry George and his ideas of geolibertarianism? Geo I'm not quite familiar who Henry George is. He believes basically that uh, property uh, is owned, uh, land cannot be owned by an individual. He believed in capitalism, but he didn't believe in land ownership. He believed that everyone owned the land. Yeah, so like <clears throat> what you have to do is just actually to define um, you know, things that you can't own, right? It goes down to property, right? If he's an advocate of property rights, you have to ask him to define what is property. Um, and then it has to be something that's uh, uh, scarce, something that's uh, tangible. Uh, something that's uh, rivalrous. Uh, these kind of uh, definition of what is property then applies to anything towards that. Uh, and land itself would be scarce and rivalrous uh, and, and um, tangible. Um, a lot of people like to look at, uh, I think it's something from Walter Block said once, you know, look at land as um, like a slow moving ocean, you know, or like look, look at ocean as slow moving land, right? Um, right. And uh, anything that uh, exhibits those kind of properties of what is property uh, includes or included in that definition. Uh, a lot of people like I think a lot of those issues come from, though, uh, from like somebody owns land and uh, doesn't do anything with it. And it's derelict and it's abandoned. And what do you do then? Can you like take over it? Uh, a lot of these uh, communities, HOAs will have rules that say, hey, you know, like like many that exist today. If it looks like a bandit after 15 years, um, you know, it'll go up to auction, for example, right? Um, so that'll be predicated on those pers uh, respective communities and how they would handle uh, abandoned lots of property. Right on, man. Anyways, though, that's Rocket Fire. Give it up for <laughs> Cal Bolladay. Bam. Kick ass, dude. Good job. Did you say that was supposed to be done in 60 seconds? Yeah, you did fine. That's close enough. <laughs> but I timed it perfectly because we got like a couple minutes left. But uh, Cal, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, do you have any websites you want to promote or dot coms or YouTube channel? Please let our listeners know about it. Yeah, the uh, main website is uh, liberatervacom RVA stands for Richmond, Virginia. Uh, my YouTube channel is uh, Renegade Boy Scout and uh those that would be it um we do an annual festival called anarchon here in virginia uh next year will be our fourth year running and yeah i invite uh everyone to come out <laughs> do you do you go to pork fest i went back in 2012 and 2013 um i had a lot of fun then and uh maybe i might have time to check it out uh, next year there's the uh, michigan peace and liberty coalition festival that okay. is a lot of fun, and that uh, that's during the summer as well. It's a good crowd of people. Um, encourage. I was there uh, this summer, and uh, yeah, it's great, great, good people, good friends. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I might try to go to Pork Fest this next year. So uh, we're going to get the League of Liberty Alliance. So we're going to get Roger Paxton, Mark Clare, myself, and Chris Spangle out there in one place and we're going to get drunk and we're going to get Chris Spangle drunk and it's going to be fun. <laughs> I don't know if you know Chris Spang Spangle, but he doesn't drink. So, um, but we're going to get him drunk. So that's my goal is to get him liquored up and then interrogate him. <laughs> uh, but it'll be fun. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to have a good time and actually meeting a lot of, the, uh, a lot of great libertarians and a lot of great anarchists. Uh, but Cal, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's been a blast and, uh, you're really, really knowledgeable guy and you know your stuff and I wish this could be a longer show but I'm just so under the weather man I don't even think I can handle it so I think it worked out perfectly I have the the Liberty Force uh, thing I'm doing this week so I'll go ahead and insert this in the back end of it but again man thank you so much sir no it's great talking to you Johnny uh, let's do this again sometime yes sir rock and roll man News, though, give it up for Cal Molinay <laughs> 